Hi guys, it's Jen with Creatively Homemade. Today I have for you a cute little mini flower pot party favor idea. And my daughter recently turned 15, so we are well past the age of themed parties. You know, when she was little, I would do like Blue's Clues or The Little Mermaid. But once they hit their preteen years, they are not really interested in that anymore. But I still do like to make them party favors for their friends. And so um, I just typically go with a floral theme or something pretty when um, for my girls once they're teenagers. So I made these cute little mini flower pot favors for all my daughter's friends at her party. And they're just filled with little candies. I used M&M's, but you can use whatever um, tiny candies you want. And then they've got a little pick on them with a flower. And you tie them with a little bow. They are super simple, but everybody loved them. So I thought I would tell, show you how to make these today. Now these little mini pots, I think they're um, maybe a couple inches tall, two and a half inches tall. And you can find them at craft stores. I found mine at Michael's. Um, I believe you can always also find them at Hobby Lobby or whatever craft store you might have in the area. And you can also find them on Amazon. Um, if you're interested in making these and can't find these pots locally, I have linked to where you can get them on Amazon in the description box below. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make these. So first off, you want to make the flower part of this party favor. And I used the Flower Shop stamp set from Stampin' Up! to make the flowers. This is super versatile. I use this stamp set all the time. And one thing I really love about it is that it has a coordinating paper punch. So you don't have to fussy cut out these flowers. It makes it really, really quick and easy to make these party favors. And you can use whatever um, stamp that you want. I did an assortment for my daughter's party, but if you prefer one of the images over the other, you can certainly make all your party favors in that image. Now I do have a quick tip. If you do have the, the uh, paper punch and you're going to cut that out, cut these stamped images out with that. Um, you want to look for, it's hard to see, there's a little ridge on one of the petals and that is your guide to show you where to line up. Um, I have gone through on all of my stamped images and put a little um, sharpie line so that I know which petal to face downward on my paper and then that makes it super easy for me to line it up when I go to put it in my punch. If you'll see there's a little notch right here and so they did that to help you line this up because this is not a very easy stamp set to line up with this punch if you don't know that little trick. So definitely uh, mark your stamp sets if you decide to make this or mark your stamps with a sharpie so you know at a glance what petal you need down. Now I did want to say that you can um, either stamp this image once or twice per party favor. Um, this particular one if you turn it over it's the same design. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it blank on the back. Um, I think it's a more finished look if you do two. However, um, the shape is not exactly symmetrical, so it doesn't line up perfectly. So you may have a little bit of spaces where you see that it doesn't line up just right. And so if that bothers you, um, go ahead and just make it one-sided. So I'm just stamping this today in Berry Burst. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp another one just so I can show you how I put it together with two. And like I said, I made sure to get that my little Sharpie marked petal um, down so that when I go to punch that out, I know where to find it. So I'm done with the ink pad. And then open up the paper punch. And then I know it lines up very easily because I've already gotten it positioned like it needs to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and punch both of those out. And it leaves a nice little border around each petal. Okay. So we're done with that. Now, um, you can use several different things to put 
your flour into your flour pot. I am just using wood coffee stirs because they were easy for me to find at the grocery store. Um, you can also use like Wilton lollipop sticks. Those would work well. Um, there are um, little food picks that are plastic that you can also find at the grocery store. Those work. So whatever you want to use for the stick, um, whatever you might have on hand or whatever you can find locally would be fine. These coffee stirs tend to be a little long, so what I do is just cut off maybe two inches. I don't have to measure it, just eyeball it, just to make the stick a little bit shorter. And then I use um, glue dots to attach the flowers to the stick. You can certainly use a glue gun. I just It's easier for me not to have to mess with heating a glue gun up, so I use glue dots. And these are Stampin' Up's mini glue dots, and I just put them in a dispenser. I found this dispenser at my local craft store, and then I just keep refilling them with the Stampin' Up glue dots. Um, they're the same brand, so I just like having them in a dispenser. makes it easier. So I put a couple of the glue dots on here. One right in, under the other. And that just holds it a little bit more securely. And then I position it so that we have a petal, or in between the petals. So kind of you have a petal on either side of the stick. Now, if you want to go ahead and make it so it's two-sided, what I recommend is kind of rotating, you know, rotate your petal around until you see where it lines up and it's a pretty good fit. Um, like I said, it's not going to be perfect because this is not a symmetrical shape, but you can get it pretty close. And if that's important to you that you have it on the front and the back, then you can go ahead and do it, do it that way. Just make sure to rotate it because there are some orientations that just, um, don't work as well. Like this one in particular, you can see a lot of extra white around the edge. So just rotate it until you get a good fit. And then use mini glue dots to attach the second flower to the back side. Now to assemble your little flower pots, of course you need one of the little mini um, terracotta flower pots. And then you also need some sort of baggie to line it. These are not food safe, so I would not put any candy or anything up next to the clay pot. So what I did, <laughs> These are sandwich bags. They are inexpensive and you probably already have them on hand if you have kids in school. Um, if you want a little bit more finished look, you can certainly buy little cellophane bags, but this works just as nicely. Um, it just You just have to cut the bag. <clears throat> so what I did was I cut off the corner. I cut a square. I cut it about in half down the middle here and then cut with maybe well, that's maybe three inches off the top. And it just gives you a little corner pouch, and it works really well when you go tie it with the ribbon. You can bunch it up, and it gives you a nice look. So there's the little pouch. I don't know how well this is going to show up on the video, but you've got your corner where you can put your candy down in it. So go ahead and stick that in your pot and push it down. And then you can put your candy in. I'm just using peanut M&M's because that's my daughter's favorite and that's what I have on hand. Try to get an assortment of colors in there if you can and fill it um, up to the top. You want, a ver you want a lot of candies in there to be able to hold the stick upright. So there we go. So fill them pretty full and then you can go ahead and stick the stick down in there. And just use some ribbon to tie them up. Um, I'm using um, quarter inch ribbon. This is Daffodil Delight and it's got some stitching on it which makes it really pretty. Um, I am using, whoops, there's my fabric scissors. Using about 12 inches to make it easy to tie. And just kind of bunch the plastic up around the stick, if you can see. And then tie your ribbon. Now I have to admit here, I'm going to have a little uh, confessional here, I am the worst at tying ribbons, so you're probably going to see me fumble with this quite a bit, 
trying to get it straight. If y'all have any tips for tying ribbons, be sure to leave them in the comments because I can need all I need all the help I can get. Mine never turn out pretty like everybody else's. But that's okay. Because I don't think anybody's looking at how pretty the bow is tied. Okay. So once you get the ribbon like you like it, just trim the ends off. I'd like to trim, a, trim them at an angle so they don't fray. Okay. And then the only other thing you want to do is to put like a center in your flower to give it some bling. I am using um, these glitter enamel dots, which I really love. They're new from Stampin' Up! in this new catalog. And I'm using the yellow ones to kind of match the ribbon. And I just use a paper piercing tool to pick one up. It makes it easy to place it exactly where you want it. So you get it exactly in the center. And that's all there is to this, guys. Super quick. I mean, I made a ton of these for my daughter's party guest in like an hour. And they all love them. If you are interested in making these, I have links to all the supplies I use down in the description box below. If you enjoyed this craft video, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.